For a little while now, the Focke-Wulf 190A5 is available as an early access aircraft for the Battle of Kuban DLC. And here and there I get the question what the differences are if we compare the A5 to the 190A3, which is available as a collector's aircraft for the base game of IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad. And that is what we do today. We take a look at those differences and how you can benefit from them. I already did a how to fly video on the A3, which is still valid for the most part. However, since then we got two major flight model changes, which did not change the general fighting style, but made the Fogwolf series way more competitive in a couple of ways. I will mention those changes as well, so I will even talk about the new capabilities of both Focke-Wulf types. For the future I plan more videos where I explain changes and differences of successor or predecessor aircraft where I can build on an already existing how-to video. And that is the reason I won't explain things in this video again which are the same on aircraft I already featured, but I will focus on the differences. If you haven't already watched the A3 video yet, I recommend to do so. The link is on the screen and in the description. But let's start and we start with the external differences. After the German engineers noticed that the payload of the Focke-Wulf could be increased with some relatively minor changes, the nose of the 190A5 was lengthened by about 15 cm and that shifted the center of gravity further to the front and allowed for heavier stuff on the belly and wings of the aircraft. More about that later. If you then enter the cockpit you are maybe surprised that you won't find your gauges where they were on the A3, at least some of them. For example the manifold pressure gauge is now on the right of the panel and the RPM is right in the center of the instrument panel. New, however, is the artificial horizon. The old turn and bank indicator is no more. With the new gauge you can fly more easily through conditions where you can't see your surroundings, like in clouds or fog. On the right you see a radio device which shows you the direction of to the closest airfield with a radio beacon. So if you want to head to the closest airfield, you have to align the needle in the middle with a white marking in the bottom of the instrument. Keep in mind that radio beacons have to be placed by the mission designer on the airfield and even if they are there in the mission's beginning, they can be destroyed, so your brain is still very much needed. Another new thing, which honestly looks a little awkward, is that little crank below the speed indicator. With that thing you can control the outlet cowl shutters, which regulate the engine temperature. Right at the crank is a scale which indicates the status of the cow flaps in quarters. Four for full open and one for a quarter open. Those flaps have a serious speed impact, so close them down as far as you can without overheating the engine and usually they can be closed quite far. In level flight you can close them almost completely. In summer and in hard climbs they have to be opened a little more. The thing is, you don't have any indicator for the cylinder head temperature and it's the cylinder head which overheats if you close your radiators too far and your engine is overheating. The oil, which you have an indicator for, is still pretty much fine at that point. So if you have the HUD warnings disabled, the only thing which you notice is that the RPMs are getting unstable after a while. Your engine isn't damaged yet at that point, but you have a little time to open the radiators again or to level out to get more air to the engine, but don't wait too long. But other than that, just select a nice setting which brings you in most situations a nice and cool engine and otherwise if you have to run or to chase somebody, close the radiators down so you get that extra speed. As I said, it is really a serious impact. But let's continue with the loadout options and those are really interesting for the A5. At first the bomb selection is actually the same compared to the A3, but with the so-called U-17 strike mod the aircraft changes quite a bit. You can then equip a 250kg or a 500kg bomb and 50kg bombs, which are then attached additionally on the racks on the wings and that turned the F5 into a pretty heavy loaded attack aircraft. As a reminder, the A3 only can carry 250kg or 500kg or the 50kg bombs. 
Furthermore, with the strike mode you get extra boost, which can be activated below 1 km of altitude by the press of the boost button you have to set up in the options. That increases the manifold pressure from 1.42 attar to a whopping 1.65 attar. The boost can be used for 10 minutes instead of the usual emergency power of 3 minutes. But don't cheer too much, that incredible power is there for a reason. The mod has additional armor around the engine and the cockpit, which increases the aircraft's weight by around 200 kg. That boost is basically there to cancel out the speed loss due to the weight and the drag penalty of the bomb brakes. And with that boost, the U17 mod is roughly as fast as an unmodded A5, which is of course and obviously much lighter. Don't get me wrong, it, that is still an achievement with all that weight and stuff. In an actual operation, that boost is often used after a high speed diving pass and back home, basically just activating the boost and running home. In that situation, if done right, no Russian aircraft can follow the A5. Alternatively, and without the U17 mod, you have the option to install two more 20mm guns. The two 20mm guns you already know from the A3. Those are the FF cannons, German for Flügelfest, installed into the wings. But more interestingly, you can install four additional 20mm MG151 cannons, which add a serious punch. I mean, you basically triple the firepower compared to the basic A5. Just imagine that uh, the modification with the gun ports has basically the firepower of six 109s combined. But that, of course, comes at a cost. You lose at least 40 kph stop speed, which puts you behind the top speed of many Russian fighters. In practice, I had the situation that I could not catch a MiG-3 on the deck, which surprised me a bit, I have to say. But maybe not so surprising if you consider the weight and the size of the gun ports. So, if you decide to go with the gun ports, you have to be aware that you have to play very, very carefully you lose a lot of performance, which gets you safe back home very often. Speaking of performance and speaking of speed, if we just consider the standard A5 without the mod and without any additional gun ports, the A5 is quite a bit faster than the A3. I personally don't know fully why the A5 is so much faster, but I think, and the emphasis is on the think, that the new shape of the nose and maybe the now controllable radiator flaps are improving the aerodynamics a bit. But if you know more, let me know. I want to know. Uh, it's always interesting to know things. So, but back to the simulation. On the deck, the A5 on combat power and closed radiators comes close to the A3's top speed on emergency power. And if you remember, the A3 was on the deck already faster than all the Russian planes, Yak-1B and LA-5 included. The emergency power of the A5 makes the aircraft on the deck another 22 kph faster than the A3, which means that in summer conditions the aircraft races with 565 kph over the deck. That is 35 kph faster than the BF-109 F4 is capable at maximum settings. And that, of course, for a longer time before the engine blows. If you put bombs or more guns on the aircraft, the top speed will suffer, obviously. As I said, the gun ports cost at least 40 kph and the extra boost of the U-17 mod roughly gets you back to the unmodded state, at least in terms of top speed, if you dropped all your bombs, of course. With all that armor, the Focke-Wulf is affected in many other ways, like stability, climb performance and roll rate and much more. The unmodded A5 maybe climbs a little bit better, but uh, not a whole lot, and turns and rolls are comparable to the A3. But maybe now to conclude this chapter, a few words on the Focke-Wulf series as a whole after now two major flight model changes. In the first patch, which was released shortly after my A3 tutorial, the A3 got much more stable in turns and now loses less energy in turns. The flying is much more easy and turns and if you push the nose down doesn't end in a spin so easy. The A5 is in all this very similar, but has here and there some minor differences I really can't put my finger on, it just feels a little different. 
However, the second flight model patch, which was uh, lately with the release of the Cuban map, was a huge overhaul of the rudder and control surface mechanics of all aircraft of the simulation. Now, all aircraft roll slower on higher speeds, especially the 109 series. The Focke-Wulf series wasn't that much affected by the patch, however, which means that they are now at high speeds the most agile aircraft. Focke-Wulfs roll nicely, they turn nicely, and they are overall super responsive, especially in comparison to the 109. The Focke-Wulfs are now the big winner of that FM patch. High speed diving attacks aren't that either with 109 anymore. The Focke-Wulf, however, that beast really comes truly alive as soon as it's flying in high speeds. And that allows even for turn fight tactics at high speeds, for super fast passes on slow enemies like Peshkas for example, roads work now way better as a defensive measurement and are a real asset. I think I, I show you a few clips in the background where I dive away from the enemy and basically uh, after I picked up some speed in my dive, I just rolled myself on the back and then back again and the enemy was off. So those really snappy rolls are super good as a defensive measure. To conclude this video, a few fighting tips. Basically the fighting style of the A5 compared to the A3 stays absolutely the same. But the same stuff which worked on the A3 works now with the A5 much better even. Try to force high speed attacks, keep your turns minimal, keep your speed high and dive away when necessary. I know I a few minutes ago I mentioned that the Focke Wolf 190 is now more stable in turns and such, but that still gets you killed quite quickly as an enemy fighters lose less energy in turns. Avoid hard climbs when in gun range and run away in straight lines. If you do that you are basically untouchable. Avoid looping around too much as it costs energy. If you have to fight at one spot, keep your turns wide and a little bit more in the horizontal with minimal vertical components. That conserves energy and makes situational awareness much easier. The best defensive maneuver is still diving away and if the enemy follows you to the deck, open up the throttle and run away in a straight line. No one will catch you if he hasn't the energy on you and even if often the speed margin is big enough. If the speed margin is not big enough and if the enemy is already close up to you, you have no other chance than to try to outroll the enemy. That works reasonable well, but isn't a guarantee to survive every fight. To survive a defensive rolling fight in a Focke Wolf requires still a lot of skill and luck of course. Even the highest skilled Focke Wolf pilots get shot down in those maneuvers. So I repeat myself, the best defensive maneuver is to stay out of gun range of your enemy and if the danger arises that the enemy gets into the gun range is to dive away, to race away in straight lines. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and I thank you for watching. If you like, take a look in the description, there is a link to my Discord server. There we have a nice community of about by now 450 members or something like this. And there's of course a text chat and the voice chat. So we text a lot about aircraft and other stuff and nice discussions uh, about different topics, technical topics, tactical topics and alike. Um, but then there's of course the voice chat where we fly, do some sorties. We are flying around in a battle of Stalingrad practicing or flying on tactical air war when it's up and such. So if you like, take a look, it's a nice community, but that's it. I wish you a good day, see you soon, bye bye.